見つけたぜヘイミスターサーブゲッチュ私こういうものですがおいスカートに来てのチームを捨てる気かよよし契約成立だ Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. t e r e k and I are continuing the series, The PlayStation 2 Palace, where I take a look at some of my favorite PlayStation 2 games of all time, and a lot of games that are not going to appear on any of the internet's top 10 lists of best PlayStation 2 games. And today we're playing Dark Watch by High Moon Studios, and I think it is probably the best first person shooter on the PlayStation 2, and it's not a console really known for its first person shooters, in my opinion. But this game is absolutely outstanding from its premise to its mechanics to its universe, and I absolutely love it. Before we get too far involved, then you may a huge favor go down below, hit like and subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But let's jump right into Dark Watch, a little bit further into the game than the intro. This is just basically a horror western first person shooter, and for its time and era, it has great voice acting and a really good story. But a first person shooter lives or dies based on its mechanics, and Dark Watch has some absolutely incredible gameplay. It is not surprising that the studio that developed this would go on to work on some of the Call of Duty games. Not really my preferred type of first person shooter, but I cannot say that they do not competently represent the genre as a whole. I love horror games, I love western games, I love really good deep cut games, and that is why Dark Watch is on this list. It is just so much fun, and mechanically, it is an absolutely spectacular first person shooter, and one that doesn't get mentioned, in my opinion, near enough. You will see that because we have been turned into a vampire, a little bit of a spoiler in the story, but doesn't really matter, we have some vampire abilities, like the ability to see in the dark and see where our opponents are. But when you get this pistol here and you start just using that classic Western trope of hitting the hammer with your hand and rapid firing, it is just such a great feel. And graphically, we are on PCSX2 upscaling it, but the game looks incredible. You could tell me this was an early generation PlayStation 3 game, and I would 100% believe you. But the gunfights, the gun mechanics, all of the shooting just work. If you're into first person shooter games and you've never played this before, you're going to absolutely love it, or else your money back guarantee from me. But considering you're not spending any money with me, that guarantee, as usual, is an absolute zero. But I still think you're going to really love the game. And you will see here now that we have gotten through the graveyard, we're going to enter the crypt, and this game is like light horror. I wouldn't say anything is ever scary, but it kind of feels like, in some way, shape, or form, A pseudo sequel to Blood on DOS. Absolutely spectacular first person shooter game that deals in horror, but also has some light comedy elements. Not much comedy going on in Dark Watch, but it's definitely not that scary of a game either. But now that we have the classic shotgun, every first person shooter has to have one. We can just mow through these skeletons with wild abandon. I love just letting them get close to the screen and unloading that shotgun shell on them, because they absolutely just dissolve if you get them close enough. And all of the animations in the enemies really sell the horror aspect as well. They're gonna jump, they're gonna run at you, they're gonna scream, they're gonna wield weapons and guns, and it all just really works. And I think it's a really good design decision as well to give them those red glowing eyes because a lot of this game is just muted browns and grays, and it can sometimes be hard to spot a skeleton against the walls, but because they do have those red glowing eyes, it's a really good design decision to give you an indication of where they are. But you are going to get different power ups as you go throughout the game. And now we have the vampire jump, which is going to give us this big floaty double jump mechanic, which is going to change the combat entirely. You're now not just ground based, you can jump around. And in some ways, it kind of feels like a precursor to Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, where you had those gigantic jumps. But nothing feels better than getting up on the top here and kind of seeing where those skeletons are coming from and letting them jump or run into your field of view. It just feels so good when you're in combat in this game. And it is an early FPS on consoles, which makes it even more impressive. Because even at this stage, the first person genre was not exactly perfect on consoles, but Dark Watch, I think, gets it as close to perfect as you're gonna be. And I just love those skeletons. But the soundtrack, straight fire, listen, and I'll be right back.
think the soundtrack just works perfectly for a game like this, and I love that it muffles when you go into that vampire red view as well, kind of like you're more in your head and you're losing a little bit of that exterior noise that you would be focusing on. But all of this game is just incredible in my opinion. The character models that woman in the Victorian dress just floating around as a vampire shooting at you. It just 100% works. But again, what I love so much about this game is just overall the mechanics of being a vampire. You can double jump over the skeletons, land behind them, and then start unloading the shotgun on them. It gives you more than just your standard first person shooter, and it does it early enough in kind of the genre's life where it feels new and unique. Of course we have games that work like that now, but this was not the norm back then. This was kind of the exception, not the rule. And as I get this TNT here, there's so many different explosive weapons in the game as well. TNT, sticks of TNT on the end of a crossbow. It is just a blast to blow these characters up. And all of the character designs work really well, I think, as well. The skeletons just look good. Those Victorian women look incredible. The gunslinging cowboys look great. Now there is a mechanic that would also go on that I believe at least to kind of inform Bioshock where you can either do the good mode and purge your soul of the infection or be evil and suck her soul dry and you're going to get more or less power-ups or mechanics based upon your decisions. You get to decide if you're going to be a good person fighting against the vampire curse or a bad vampire that is using your powers to make the game easier for yourself. But anytime I can shoot a stick of dynamite and blow up a zombie, it just works. And that 100% reminds me of blood as well with the flare gun and them running at you on fire. But every once in a while, you're going to get a bigger, more powerful opponent like this dude here. He looks like he's holding two giant swords. Not sure what type of sword it is. But he is morbidly obese onto like his fifth chin and he's just going to run you down. But the great part is you are faster than him because he is fat and you are not. So you can just blow him up and it looks spectacular when you do it. But the voice acting in this game, top notch as well. Listen and I'll be right back. Jericho, this way! This passage goes under the mountain. <laughs> Jericho, what is it? It's taking hold. We've got to get you to the Dark Watch outpost. The cross burns you because you are weak. You have been chosen. In time, you will know why. Until then, you suffer. Honestly, the voice acting is great, and back in this generation, you were not guaranteed good voice acting at all, and honestly, I've been recently playing Wanted Dead, and that's got some of the worst modern voice acting I've ever heard. It is terrible, but I kind of love it for it, and that head-ripping scene is just spectacular. You were probably not expecting that, and don't yell at me in the comments below about spoiler warnings. This game is old. By this point in time, you should expect any video, probably just to spoil it for you, but it really isn't that big of a story beat either, but once we get down into this mining shaft, the combat just gets more and more more intense and that's what I love about this game you're gonna be fighting four five six seven eight enemies at the same time in areas and the areas are not completely open you're gonna be able to jump up and down hide behind things but you're gonna to have to pay attention to where the enemies are as well and that's so important in this game because it's gonna throw a lot at you at once and you need to manage your ammo and what you're gonna do about it and that's why it is so much fun it's frantic it's frenetic it is wild, it is fast, it's all the things I want in a first person shooter and I love right there that you can blow the skeleton's hands off but he's still going to come running at you just trying to bite you. You can shoot limbs off and it's not going to stop those skeletons. Maybe they give you a couple too many skeletons early in the game but the design is so good and there's so interesting enemies as far as their movement is concerned that I want to just keep seeing more and more of them. And all of the cutscenes are well done as well. We hit that plunger and we're able to get another door open you're constantly being funneled into arenas where you got to fight for your life and then once you get them done you're good to go the only thing that could be slightly improved is the jumping mechanics and in indoor areas you're going to have to double jump onto platforms you can hit the ceiling as well so i kind of wish that it was a little bit easier to deal with that double jump mechanic but honestly it provides so much fun to the game i am willing to forgive it the sins of being a little bit hard to navigate in 3d because of it 
But again, that's the thing. This was not commonplace when the game came out. So they were experimenting with a lot of mechanics that will become very popular in FPS games moving forward. And if they do get in your face, you always have a little bit of a melee attack that you can use. But again, if this game is just a sleeper hit. And I'm really surprised I don't hear more people talk about it. It is just so much fun, and the mechanics are absolutely perfect. If you're looking for a good first-person shooter game that you've never played before, I can't recommend Dark Watch enough. I want everyone to go out and play this after the video if they never had, because I would be really surprised if anybody commented back and said they didn't enjoy their time with it. The only way you're going to not like this game is if you don't like horror first-person shooters, or you have absolutely no taste for the Western genre as well. But I love it once you get past a certain point in this level, the skeletons are just going to run at you with TNT crates and you need to blow them up before they get to you. One misplaced shot and you are going to explode and you are going to die and have to do the whole thing again. And that's another great thing that Dark Watch does. It reuses the same enemies, the environments look similar, but they change the gameplay mechanics up just enough to always make it feel like it is fresh. Skeletons running at you with TNT on their shoulders is just amazing and if you do bait them out and get them in the right spot you can take a couple enemies out alongside them. If you make a mistake like that though you're going to get blown up and if you make a big mistake you're going to die. Like right here you're going to see I'm able to shoot that barrel but then very quickly I'm going to run out of ammunition and I'm going to be 100% screwed. Make sure you manage your ammo or else you're going to have skeletons running at you with TNT. Short of that, I'm almost done, I'm out of ammo, and I'll see you guys next time. Here he comes. Bye-bye.